press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. In this episode, we will discuss the treatment of contingently issuable shares at the time of determining the earnings per share. First and the foremost, what do we mean by contingently issuable shares? Let us say you have set certain long-term targets for your top-level management or maybe for your employees. If those targets are achieved, then we have promised to issue additional shares to our top-level managers or maybe to our employees. These are shares which will be issued contingent to fulfillment of those conditions in future. And that is the reason we refer them as contingently issuable shares. If all the conditions are satisfied, then as an entity, we are obliged to issue shares. And since we are obliged to issue shares, we will consider that for the determination of basic EPS. So remember this, all conditions are fulfilled in future. We will issue the shares. I would rather say we are obliged to issue shares. And that is the reason we consider it for basic EPS. So if I want to summarize that point, I can say all conditions are satisfied, then consider for basic EPS. Question is what to do for the diluted EPS. Now see, this condition may be based on turnover or it may be based on earnings or it may be MPS or maybe any other parameter. So if I continue, we say condition is based on maybe turnover, maybe turnover or earnings or NPS. So let us say we have given a target to our top level management that see right now the share price is so and so after three years after four years this should be the NPS. So we are setting a target on the basis of NPS or it can be on the basis of turnover. You may tell your top level management that see in the next five years we should be in top 10 as far as turnover is considered. So basically there is a condition which is based on the turnover or maybe the earnings or maybe the NPS. Now, should I consider contingently issuable shares for diluted EPS, yes or no? Now, whenever you are determining the diluted EPS at the end of the reporting period, you should just ask yourself that if the turnover or the earnings or the NPS at the end of the reporting period is assumed to be at the end of the contingency period, are we then fulfilling the condition? If your answer is yes, then consider for diluted EPS. Otherwise, ignore it even for the diluted EPS. I just summarized this particular point. And once we summarize it, we will take one simple example and the concept will become very clear. What we are saying is, you should ask something in this way, that if turnover or earnings or MPS at the end of reporting period at the end of reporting period is assumed to be turnover or earnings or MPS at end of contingency period, contingency period, then is the condition satisfied? So this is the question that we will ask ourselves. At the end of the reporting period, if I say is also at the end of the contingency period, are you satisfying the condition? Of course, your answer will be either yes, if the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, then consider for diluted EPS. 
If the answer is no, then ignore for diluted EPS. This is the guidance which is given in the accounting standard or we can say in the S33 or you may even consider accounting standard 25. We are determining the earnings per share. So if the turnover or earnings at the end of the reporting period, I assume it is the same at the end of the contingency period. In that event, are you satisfying the condition? If your answer is yes, then consider for diluted EPS. If the answer is no, ignore it even for diluted EPS. To make this point clear, let's take one simple example and it will become very clear, you know, very clear. Let's consider something in this way. Let us say the current market price of a company's share, let's say, is 100. The company sets a three-year target. The three-year target is something like this, that we set a target and the target is that NPS at end of third year should be rupees 300. In other words, we are suggesting to our top level management that take decisions in such a way that the share price triples in three years itself. Right now it is 100, it should become 300 over here. So we are setting a condition based on the NPS. Now most of us when we will see this thing, we will feel that there is only one condition. You know, most of the times, this is what we do. When we analyze this, we feel there is only one condition. You know, what's the condition? that the share price should become 300 but actually if you see it carefully it does not have one condition it is having two conditions tell me what are the two conditions it should become 300 and it should become 300 at the end of the third year even if it becomes 300 at the end of the first year then also the target is not getting achieved See, increasing the share price is one thing and maintaining it at the same rate or the same level is altogether another. For example, let us say you are appointing a new CEO. Now this person is having a charismatic personality. The moment you announce that so and so person will now become our CEO, automatically the stock market takes a very favorable view and the share price starts rising. The CEO has not even taken a single decision. Only by announcement, the share prices started rising. We don't want this. We want an actual rise in NPS, which is backed by the actions of the CEO. So we tell the CEO that the share price should be 300 or more, but at the end of the third year. Share price rises right now, we will not consider that. After three years, it should be 300 rupees. So we have basically set two conditions. One condition based on MPS and there's another condition based on the number of years. Let's analyze now over here. How will this really work? Let's see it. Okay, so we take over here, year end. Then let's consider the actual NPS. We will compare this with the target NPS. Okay, so we consider this with the target NPS. And then we say the condition, right, condition is based on NPS and also based on the number of years. And based on this, we will consider our conclusion for basic and diluted EPS. Let's see this thing. And it will become very clear over here. Let us say at the end of the first year, the share price right now is 100. But the share price has already risen, let us say, to... 170 or let's say given a higher price let's say it has become 250 so we have announced a new ceo and based on the ceo you know only the announcement is good enough and the share price has become 250 but say we have set a target of 300 so at the end of the first year ask yourself have you achieved the condition based on mps 
tell me, have you achieved the condition based on NPS? Our answer is no, right? Because the share price is lower than our target NPS, right? Similarly, ask yourself, is the number of year condition getting satisfied, right? NPS is at the end, NPS should be at the end of the third year. This is only the end of the first year. So the number of year condition is also not satisfied. Now I can consider it for basic EPS only if all conditions are satisfied. All conditions. None of the condition is satisfied. If none of the condition is satisfied, I cannot consider it for basic EPS. But should I consider this for diluted EPS? Now that's the thing. See what we are saying is NPS end of reporting period and we consider it to be the same at the end of the contingency period. So ask yourself that the NPS is 250 at the end of the first year. But let's say for a moment we assume that it is not the end of the first year but the end of the third year. Why third year? Because that's your contingency period. Your target is for three years and that's your contingency period. So what we are arguing is that if we assume that the NPS of 250 rupees, right, at the end of the first year is also the NPS at the end of the third year, are we achieving the condition? The answer turns out to be no because the NPS is still below the target. So the answer turns out to be no even over here and that's the reason it will be ignored even for the diluted earnings per share. Right, so I will ignore it for basic as well as the diluted EPS. Fine. Let's consider the next one. At the end of the second year, let us say the share price now is 325. Right, the share price is 325 and our target is 300 over here. Okay, so now what we do is we ask ourselves that are we achieving the NPS condition? Are you achieving the NPS condition? Because the NPS is, NPS is 300, so uh, sorry, 325, so it is already above the target. That means the NPS condition has been satisfied. So here my answer will be yes. But then, this NPS should be more than, uh, uh, sorry, this NPS should be 300 or more than 300 at the end of the third year. It is still the end of the second year. So number of year condition is not satisfied. Now when can I consider it for basic EPS? If all conditions are satisfied. One is satisfied, another is not satisfied. So all conditions are not satisfied. So I will again ignore it for basic EPS. So for basic EPS, it will be ignored. What about the diluted EPS? What do you say? NPS, end of reporting period, end of contingency period. I will make an assumption. 325, which is at the end of the second year, if I assume that 325 is at the end of the third year, then is the condition getting satisfied? End of reporting period, second year, contingency period, third year. So I assume that NPS of 325 at the end of the reporting period is assumed to be at the end of the contingency period of third year. Am I achieving the condition? The answer is yes. I am, right? Answer is yes. Then you should consider it for diluted EPS. So this time I will consider it for diluted EPS. And finally, three years, let's say the share price now is 305. Compared to the previous year, the share price has gone down. So what? The condition is 300 or more. Now, ask yourself, have you achieved the NPS condition? Target was 300, actually is 305. So my answer is yes over here, right? And the second condition was it should be at the end of the third year. Is it the end of the third year now? Right, it's the end of the third year now. And that is the reason this condition is also getting satisfied. All conditions are getting satisfied. Yes here, yes here. All conditions are satisfied. I will consider it for basic EPS. And remember one thing, the moment the shares will be considered for basic EPS, 
it is automatically considered even for the diluted EPS. After all, what is diluted EPS? Profit for basic EPS plus additional profit uh, due to the cessation of potential equity instrument and that I will divide by veins for basic EPS plus additional veins. Veins for basic EPS plus. So, the shares will get included in the weighted average. By veins, I mean weighted average number of equity shares, short form WANES. So, weighted average number of equity shares which are there for basic EPS. To that, I will add additional weights and then I will get the diluted EPS. So, since it is already included in the weighted average number of equity shares for basic EPS, it is automatically considered even for the diluted EPS. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.